Hey everyone, welcome back to Code of Throw. In this video, I'm going to be starting a new tutorial series using Ascent Combat Framework in Unreal Engine 5 on a game where you can basically throw a ball at enemies and catch them and then use them as your companions or AI to fight for you. Similar to a lot of the famous games that you've heard of growing up, and let's go ahead and get started. So I'm just going to start with a very blank ACF temp, or I'm just going to start with a blank project because I'm not going to use the sample project for this one. It This one is just going to import the plugin itself, so I'm just going to launch my new project in 5.4.2, click games, click third person, and I'm going to call this something like, um, and I'll call it something like monster catcher or something, monster catcher. And then I'll just leave the project location as default and I'll hit create. And now after my project starts, I'm just going to go to edit plugins and enable anything ascent combat framework related. So in my case, I'll just enable ascent combat framework, the tool set and the UI tools because I have ultimate and I'll hit restart to restart the project. So now I'm just going to right click, create a new folder and call this something like weapons. And this is where I'm going to place this ball actor. That's going to just, it'll ideally just put the enemy in an array of companions that I have and then destroy the actor. So we'll start with the very basics at first. All right. So I pretty much made this BP ball using ACF projectile. Um, unfortunately, this is not the way to go. So I created. So because the parent class is ACF projectile, I also called, I also tried to do ACF physical projectile, but then as I researched in the ACF discord that apparently 3.5 is missing some features. So my ball kept getting destroyed after a single bounce. So I'll show you here. So even if I set the bounces to four, it works as I wanted to, because I'm only just destroying the other actor and it'll have that impulse bounce and then just destroy. Whereas this ball actually stays on the ground. And that's kind of what I'm looking for. For my ball and this is or sorry uh for this ball because this is um just the parent class of actor so i think for this case i'm not going to be using acf for just the ball itself but for stats and all that i think acf is the way to go so far i haven't tested it out but i will get to that eventually so what i did was i just created an actor and then i added the static mesh of a ball which is already default in unreal engine and then under physics i just set it to custom and it only overlaps the pawn because I'm using the event actor begin overlap, which if you click your BP actor ball, there is, if you scroll all the way down to events, there is a on actor begin overlap. And I just want to destroy the actor and print the string. So basically what I'm going to be doing in the future is on actor begin overlap. It's going to, first, we're going to start with just putting it in the inventory. So we're not going to have like a percent chance in order to get the actual creature or whatever we're capturing the monster or whatever we're just going to instantly get it because i want to make sure that it actually sets in our array and we can use it and summon it via a ui or something so but that that'll be pretty complex but it'll be easier as i explain things later on so i just created this actor ball and then make sure that simulate physics is checked over here under the physics tab and then enable gravity if not and then for collision presets, just everything block, just so it doesn't go through the world, except for pawn, which is what it's going to overlap. Eventually, maybe, I know the ball bounces off the Pokemon, or I know the ball bounces off the monster in order to capture it. So I could try doing something like on hit for pawn only. So let me actually try that out right now. In order to get your ball to just hit only the pawn, and not the world before I had it set to destroy actor, it would just destroy anything the ball touches and it was going crazy. So for the ball collision, I set it to block all because I want it to actually just destroy. Like I wanted to have an impact. I don't want it to just go through and capture it. I want to actually impact the pawn. So what I'm going to do first is just cast to pawn and it won't be performance heavy because we're only we're only calling this cast when this ball hits. So it's not really an issue for us. And then I'll, I'll connect this other actor to object. And then I want to create a Boolean called condition and I'm going to have it twice. So when cast failed, the condition will be set to false. And then when it's true, when it's actually casted to a pawn, I'm going to set the condition to true. And if conditions true, then I want to add a branch, which is going to check for the condition. So I can either connect this or I can just get condition. And just plug this in and if that happens then it's just going to destroy actor 
and I want to print the string of the actor getting destroyed. So in order to do that, the actor that I want to destroy is the other actor. So I'm just going to connect this and then I'll connect the other actor to print string. And then I will compile and save. And now when I drop, I'm going to delete this ACF projectile ball. Now, when I drop this, my actor ball onto this character, it prints up here, ACF main character, and then the ball just roams and doesn't destroy the ground. So that's exactly what I'm looking for. Okay, nice. So only destroyed once. All right, that's good. I was just, I was just testing that out. So I didn't set up the anims, even though I just set up the, these ACF templates and so on. But in the next video, I'm going to look for some throw animations. And then I will try to set up my character actually being able to throw the ball. Uh, one more thing I forgot to add is if you want to make your ball bouncy, just right click, go to physics, add a physics material. I'm going to call it something. I'm going to select the physics material, click select and call it something like PM underscore ball. Double click to open this up and you can mess around with the physics material so you can add something like friction and restitution. So just to try this out, I'm going to set the friction to 0.2 and the restitution, which is the bounciness of the surface to something like 0.8. This might be too much, but I think it's fine. Then after that's set, I'm just going to go back to my BP actor ball. And then I'm going to click on the ball static mesh. And then I need to set the physics material override to PM ball. So I clicked on ball on my static mesh. I scroll down. And you'll see this physics material override and i'm just going to select that pm ball so now when i compile and save and play this and hit play it's going to bounce and again and we can also play around with the settings here so if i did something like i don't know let's say 100 and a one rest or 100 friction and one restitution not sure how this will go but let's try it out Try it out. It's pretty bouncy. And you can play around with it however you like. And I'll probably add a few more things, but I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching Coded Throw. Thank you for watching the first part. Like, subscribe, comment below what you want to see next. If you want to support my channel, the Patreon is in the link below. And you can join our Discord community to stay updated with these tutorials via the description below. Thanks for watching.